So we had found that our propane is not working. So over here, we have that propane control panel that does two primary things. We can turn on or off our solenoid switch. So if you go back, maybe like one of the first couple videos that we uploaded, we talk about our propane system and how we replaced all of that. And uh, so this panel controls our solenoid, which controls if the propane flows out from the tank, the bottle. And then it also will, is a sniffer. So we have a sniffer under the stove down there. So we have a propane leak. It will alert us to, uh, to the leak. But it's not working. So you should be able to see a light that says detector on over here on the right hand side. This light should be green to let you know that, hey, here I am, I'm on, I'm sniffing. L listening and sniffing for propane leaks. So that's not working. So after much too long thought and tracing wires, it was a fuse. Um, and so we're gonna replace the fuse, but in order to replace the fuse, uh, we needed these long fuses here. And I don't have any of these long fuses. I just have little tiny ones that are probably like half that size. So my tiny ones don't fit in the fuse holder where this guy lives. So, but what we do have is blade style fuses, a blade style fuse holder, and all the things that we need to install it. So we have our blade style fuse that actually sits in there. One of these leads will go to the battery source, and then one of these leads will go to the load. And then we have our heat shrink um, crimp connectors here with our crimper. Rawr, 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 rawr. Hungry crimper. Uh, we've got some strippers or yeah, wire strippers. Not the, the, the entertaining type. So the idea would be to replace the fuse holder that this guy sits in with the stuff that we have. This wasn't really on the, the list to do today, but it took high top priority because we gotta cook. <laughs> so our coffee experience has been with this guy. Um, just a, a little bottle with a, uh, like a rocket stove for like backpacking, which has been in hand, it came in handy a few times. So we're gonna definitely keep that on board. Um, but right now we really wanna cook with our own propane system and stove. That's the proper way to do it. So let's go ahead and uh, get this guy installed. All right, quick update. So I've made some good progress. So this orange line here is what runs all the way back to our propane solenoid switch and this is takes power from the terminal in our electrical up here um, and what I found was <clears throat> this setup so the whole reason we're doing this is because that fuse blew that fuse is long and skinny and fits in this long and skinny fuse holder the replacement of these type of fuse that I have won't is not long enough to fit in here. They were just really short, stubby guys. <clears throat> so, in order to get a correct size fuse, I'm just going to this style with the blade style. Um, so this is same same concept, inline fuse, but using this this style instead of that round style. But look what I found. So from the orange again runs out to our load. This black runs to the supply for the electrical. 
uh, the power. Uh, and so this was crimped together, no heat shrink, uh, just looks like a regular old style butt connector. That was running up through the fuse holder and then out the top connected to the power supply terminal was this ring terminal. And this, whatever this is, this collar here has been definitely seen better days. It's not even on there. This is all corroded. And then this was obviously the big problem is this was all corroded through or something happened there. I'm not sure. Um, maybe they did that so they could just stick it on instead of uh, doing the bolt and, and sticking it on properly. So what turned into just needing to replace a fuse was turned into replacing you know getting rid of this old stuff and then splicing in new stuff so I've got my butt connector on there to my new inline fuse holder to a new ring terminal um, and now I just need to heat shrink these down hook it up hook this up to the um, the post on the positive supply and add a fuse turn things on and pray that our propane works let's check it out green lights on that's what we want to see so when it's flashing like that, that's like warm up mode, turning on mode. So we had a little bit of a scare back here when we were, uh, cause this panel runs through that bulkhead, which comes out into this lazarette. And when we were testing to see if we had full voltage back there, the, we, this, the, some of the leads on this weren't plugged in all the way. And so we were thinking, oh my gosh, we don't have power. But if we did, it was just our tester. Um, wasn't um, hooked up properly. So, phew. We can uh, make coffee and heat up food, cook food, boil water. Very good. Win of the day. And it only took an hour and a half. So not bad. Okay, so you guys might remember we purchased all new bilge pump sensors to replace the float switch. That was a couple videos ago, but um, and we haven't ever installed it because each time the bilge pump, I think, is going to die or has quit on us, it just turns out to be a loose wire. And so the bilge pump actually hasn't been working for a number of days. And I even spent one afternoon manually like sucking out all the water. Cause I was like, all right, this is it. Now I can finally replace the switches cause it's totally dead. No, it's not totally dead. So I just found a wire, this wire that uh, goes from the fuse to the positive supply had just come loose somewhere back back behind here right here right in there the wire just popped out of its ring terminal i don't open that panel uh nobody gets back there and that's where one of my computer monitors goes for work how did it come off no idea um but yeah sure enough here it is and then i don't know if you'll be able to see in there but look at it's like a brand new one like nobody even bothered to crimp it it's not even compressed. <laughs> you can see right through it. So that's that's weird. It just popped off. I mean, sure, everything on a boat is moving. Like the wind gust blows, will kind of heal over a little bit, even here in the slip. A big boat goes by, it will have a wake. So, you know, over time, maybe it did just vibrate itself loose, but it's weird, but 
now I know what it is and I can get more, uh, a little more life out of the existing bilge pump equipment, sure, I'll just hook it back up and bilge pump will be working again. All right, let's go ahead and do that. Check it out, plugged it in, red lights on, and I can hear the bilge pump working. Let's see if we can go see some water coming out because that's really satisfying. That's the bilge pump. Yay! Two wins today. And it's just past noon. Perfect. Love it. Satisfying. It's kind of a, uh, you know, like so many challenges living on a boat. Small space, uh, damp, kind of cold sometimes. Not a lot of storage, but you know, when you do little wins like this, it's gratifying and satisfying. I like it. Yeah, on to the next thing. Next, we had dad <coughs> start on these wires here so we could put in a USB charger like that instead of a the old style cigarette lighter that was right there we put in a USB charger but in order to do that the wires wouldn't didn't work because we found the fuse that was broken but then we said why does it need to be on a fuse it really should be on a switch at the panel so the switch at the panel turned into what switch could we use, which was the stereo. The stereo turned into pulling out the CD changer. Yes, 10 disc. That was top of the line back in the day. Oh, look, and then... CD changer is out. <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness, thank you so much, Daddy. And honey, thank you. <laughs> and then, yeah, this old stereo is coming out yeah. too. I'll show you guys. It's a tape deck. <laughs> 10 disc CD changer and a tape deck. We were at the top of the line in, in 1996. Gone. Gone. Yeah. We're all about Bluetooth and uh, Bluetooth yeah. speakers nowadays. So yeah, that's coming out and we're cleaning up this over here because that'll be eventually be a, uh, a good place to mount screens mount um, any type of monitoring device that we need on the boat that's a perfect real estate for that so that's why things take 14 times longer on a boat because you just do one thing and you leads to many more others <laughs> daddy needs to come every weekend okay maybe every other weekend <laughs> you hear that you got yeah. recruited i got recruited this job market's tight <laughs> i'm retired yeah. Retired. <laughs> in control of my own time. <laughs> we got the navigator that was napping, and of course, executive explorers just sniffing, and yeah. So that's, uh, there's our update. We'll be back. Okay, you ready to see the stereo now? <laughs> Has a tape deck. Yeah. <laughs> and then it was on, connected on this board to this giant speaker so no thanks friend bye it's really heavy it's really really heavy it's the speaker and the speaker okay the it's speaker's the speaker heavy. Right. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna turn this off before I'm pulling out this old piece of equipment here I believe this is SSB I gotta look up the models but we found it was interesting because it was mounted on a, this piece of wood it's an old sign or something. I don't know what it says, but I um, thought that was pretty neat.
Amongst all these various projects that we've been showing you in the videos, we decided to do a little bit of fun. So we joined the family and caught a monster truck rally. It sure was cool to see the trucks do their cool tricks and even fall over a few times. Nobody was hurt, so it was all good fun. And the safety crew came right out and attended to the trucks um, as needed. So it was a lot of fun to see and glad that nobody got hurt. After the winner was announced, it was cool to see all the trucks come out and be in the same arena together. Before we got to see some really cool tricks from these motorbikes, it was really neat. Another really great fun thing that we were able to do is we joined both of our families at the Oregon coast. We had just the best time relaxing. We got to play some games, long walks on the beach. Even Brizzo got her fix in. And also tons of naps. Next week, we talk about the kitty box on the boat and our crew's latest adventures. Please remember to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you don't miss an episode.